This is an opal from Lightning Ridge, Australia. Sent to me by my friend Justin over at Black Opal Direct. He has a YouTube channel, which I will put in the description. I highly recommend you go check it out. It's just mesmerizing how you can turn something like this into something like this. So I've been racking my brain on how I can turn this into something cool. So I'm going to turn it into a piece of jewelry. But the medium I'm going to use to make the piece of jewelry is this really cool stuff I just found out about. It's like a water-based clay. You can sculpt it, and then you fire it, which then turns it into just solid silver. And I thought, wow, that's really cool. I'd like to play with some. But before we do, we need to grind this down so we know exactly how big it will be in its final shape. So, the way I did that is... With this contraption. <laughs> yes, it's very sophisticated. Um, this is a potter's wheel. And you may not know this, the reason I have this is... My wife is a potter. Did you put your name in the cupboard of fire? Dumbledore asked calmly. Not only is she a potter. Oh no, she's a really good potter. I'll put a link to her Insta ham and Etsy in the description. You should check that out as well. Anyways, so... Basically, this thing spins around, and what I have attached to it is a diamond wheel. It's like a metal disc with super fine diamond particles sort of embedded into it. Then, uh, to add a little water for lubrication, I'm just gonna use my old reptile dripper, let it drip on there. Then we're gonna take the stone, hold it against there, and just grind out all these pits and junk until we get a nice shape. Then we're gonna sand it, and then polish it. And I don't know what I'm doing. Ha 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 ah that was really stupid. Okay, now look down here. The thing we're gonna be working with today is called silver clay. It is silver metal powder, just like with some sort of binder and water. And then when you're done, you can fire it and uh, turn it into legit metal. In order to make this, we're going to need an assortment of sculpting tools. You're also going to need a design for the piece of jewelry you're going to make. Obviously, I made an alien octopus. I mean, because. Who wouldn't? Another thing you have to do is make your design 10% bigger than you actually want it when it's finished. I'm going to sculpt it this size, but when it's fired, it's gonna be 10% smaller, which will then match the opal size, hopefully. I'm actually a little bit nervous because this stuff is pretty expensive and I really don't want to mess this up. So let's don't. Uh, nice hiss. Feels like clay. I think it is clay. It's just way heavier. Almost like they put something in it that's heavy. All right, let's get this started.
Let's fire it. Carefully. I don't even want to touch this thing. So fragile. Okay, so what happened to the pendant? It seems to have turned into this box that we need to ship using ShipStation, which just so happens to be the sponsor of this video. We live in an increasingly automated world, but some things still require tedious manual work. Luckily for e-commerce business owners, shipping is no longer a manual task. Save time automating your shipping and returns in the ShipStation dashboard while keeping costs down with industry-leading discounts. As you know, my wife is a Harry Potter, and we frequently need to ship her mugs. ShipStation makes that easy to do with their quick setup, intuitive dashboard that lets you compare rates and print labels, and discounts up to 84% off USPS and and UPS rates. Nicole uses Etsy, but ShipStation also integrates anywhere you sell online, including Amazon, eBay, Shopify, and more. All of that combined gives her way more time to growing her business instead of doing all of that manually on her own. And you can too when you automate shipping tasks with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com forward slash Bobby Duke to sign up and get your 60 day free trial. That is ShipStation.com forward slash Bobby Duke. Am I doing that backwards? Now go and follow this weird guy. Come on, this way. I know this kiln is definitely overkill, but this is all we have. Nicole is a potter, as I told you earlier. This is what she fires her pots in. As you can see by all those pots, Nicole's kind of a pothead. <laughs> Yeah. If you don't have a kiln at home, like I said, you can also fire this using either a torch or like a small homemade little baby kiln. I actually made one, it's kind of like a mini forge, but you can use it the same way. And I show you how to make it in this video. Okay, let's poop this on in there. I have a little bit of high temperature rock wool, which is basically just like fiberglass that can take the heat. I'm gonna put that gently down. This is the, the most fragile part. I'm afraid to even pick it up. Okay, I'm just gonna do it. Oh, oh gosh, it's on there. Uh, okay, let's fire it. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna say that, I had a joke, but. <laughs> it was funny. Lid. <laughs> Please don't. Here we go. There you go. Nothing's happening. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna poop. Let's uh, do a fancy transition to tomorrow. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was... All right, is the next morning, and this is done through its firing cycle. Let's see if it is successful. Yay! I'm nervous. Oh man, that looks really good. I'm so used to being super gentle with it that it's now supposedly just solid metal and I can treat it thusly. So let's continue to work on them. Let's go inside and uh, continue to work on them. Sir, as mentioned earlier, make your piece 10% larger than you want it as shrinkage will occur. You'll notice the piece is a brilliant white due to silver oxide formation. We will remove this with a brass wire brush to make it sparkly glowy. Lock via. Then we will take our rotary carver and grind away a divot in the backside of his head to make room for his purple brain to sit slightly recessed. Now that we have all the pieces modified and polished, we will silver sort of them together. Okay, stop! Stop it! That is quite enough of that. Ah. That's better. Uh. After soldering, we will mix up a dilute solution of something deliciously named liver of sulfur and silk. Excuse me. Typically, this only takes a few seconds to achieve the right color, but for some reason, mine took several minutes. Doing this will create a dark gray patina, which you can then buff away except for the lowest points, helping to bring out all the detail. Now all that's left to do is add the Oberlin necklace and no I give up! Hey guys. It's for Klemter Gooden. Mm.